And now to the big news that got overshadowed by election night. For the first time, kids as young as five years old are eligible to be vaccinated across the country for COVID. Some children have already gotten shots since the CDC gave emergency use authorization for Pfizer's vaccine for those ages five to 11. Yeah, wasting no time doing that earlier today. This opens up vaccination now to some 28 million young Americans and by extension, leaves some 28 million families facing a decision that they've probably been thinking about for a while. And we know that a lot of people, especially parents right now, have questions. So we want to bring in Dr. Stephen Turkovich, Chief Medical Officer at Oshai Children's Hospital here in Buffalo. Dr. Turkovich, it's great to see you. Thanks for coming back on. Thanks for having me. And so we've heard a lot about COVID affecting kids to a lesser extent. By the CDC's count, only 562 kids in the U.S. ages 5 to 11 have been hospitalized with COVID since the pandemic started. So with that in mind, we often hear this question. What then is the benefit of vaccinations for kids in this age group? So that's a very good question. I've had a lot of parents that have asked me that. And as a parent and a pediatrician, I always approach these looking at what's best for my kid and what I would recommend for others. So I can say that my children actually just left their pediatrician to get vaccinated. And the reason we chose to do that was number one, to protect them, to protect them from, although rare, it can happen, severe COVID, the long-term potential, long-term effects of COVID-19, which are things that can affect their physical and their cognitive health moving forward, and also the multi-system inflammatory syndrome. So when you put all of that together, uh, that can actually be a large number of children, and many of them before they contracted those, uh, those entities were actually happy, healthy children. So there's no way to predict which child is going to go on to develop either severe acute COVID, long COVID syndrome, or multi-system inflammatory syndrome. Dr. Turkovich, I've seen a lot of posts on social media uh, over the past couple of days um, uh, from some parents who are naturally you know, skeptical about this or, or thinking about what they want to put into their kids' bodies, and you hear myocarditis coming up. I wonder if you can explain to us what the scientists and the experts have been able to find in terms of this rare side effect that I believe, and correct me if I'm wrong, that is mostly seen in older teenagers and young adults. Should, should parents of this 5 to 11 age group be concerned about myocarditis? Myocarditis? So that's a great question. I've had many parents ask me that. As we saw with the 12 and above Pfizer vaccine, there was a slight increased risk of myocarditis. And as you said, it's in children that are often 16 and above and most commonly males. Myocarditis post of viral infection is not a new thing. We've seen that. The hypothesis is that it's related to puberty and males. And so the hypothesis for this younger age group is because they're younger um, and they're not obviously going through puberty, we're gonna see less myocarditis and maybe not any at all at a higher rate than what we would expect. So the, the rate in the previous vaccine of the 12 to 15 and above was really 63 or so per million doses. That's relatively rare which is very good. And those children that did get it from the vaccine had a very mild course that was self-limited that resolved within a couple of days and just simple treatment like over-the-counter Motrin. Compare that to myocarditis that you can get from COVID. Those cases are often much more severe and sometimes go on to long chronic heart problems. So when you look at that risk benefit ratio, myocarditis is rare from the vaccine, it's mild, and it's, it's a much, much better sort of thing to get than the potential um, long-term effects of COVID, including myocarditis from COVID. I think there's a lot of parents that we've kind of seen that they think one thing for themselves, but when it comes to their kids, it's a different story. Um, you mentioned being a parent yourself, and this is kind of an opportunity. What advice would you give to someone really questioning this now that children are eligible? What do you say to them? So I always tell parents to arm themselves with the facts. First, have a conversation with your family and your children, and then talk to your pediatrician and your healthcare provider, because they can provide you all the information that you need in order to make the best decision for you and your family. This is a very highly emotional and individual decision, and it's best made with that information. So the best thing is to do, go to the CDC website, talk to your pediatrician, and have the conversation with your kid, even though they're young, uh, they often have questions and fears, so it's important to talk to them about it. And Dr. Turkovich, before we let you go, did I hear you correctly uh, off the top of this interview? Did you say that, you, that your kids um, today are already getting the vaccine? They actually already did. Or earlier this afternoon, I took them to my pediatrician and they were fortunate enough to, to get their first doses in. 
I, I tell a lot of parents as we're having you know these discussions, um, and, and I know you always advise this, that they have those conversations with their doctors. It's very telling when someone like you and your position with all that you know and all that you've experienced um, are, are getting your children vaccinated. And so I imagine you would encourage everyone watching right now, have those conversations with your doctor and, and really think about this. Absolutely, arm yourself with the facts and knowledge and make the best decision for you and your family. We've been chatting with Dr. Stephen Turkovich, the Chief Medical Officer at Oshai Children's Hospital. We so appreciate your time tonight. Thanks again. Thank you.